Rob Rayu. And I'm John Adams. A busy day across the state of Missouri and the nation. We start off tonight with your top headlines. These stories are real new now. Missouri is the latest state to pass a heartbeat bill. The House passed the Unborn Act today. It forbids abortion after eight weeks of pregnancy. More coverage coming up from Jefferson City in a few moments. 12 people were treated for injuries after a fighter jet crashes into a warehouse in California. No one was seriously injured. The cause is still under investigation. And a man with a gun who walked onto a high school campus in Portland, Oregon, is in custody tonight after he was tackled by a school security guard. The guard was a former football player at the University of Oregon. No one was seriously hurt in that incident. To protect the life of the unborn, to preserve and respect the liberty of those babies who have no voice of their own to say that they want to live. This does not have any exceptions for rape or incest. This gives more rights to the rapist than it does to the mother. It is saying that if I don't have the ability to kill my child, that I as a woman cannot obtain whatever dreams and beliefs I may have. This bill is not about pro-life. I am a woman. It is my body. It is my choice. Fierce debate over abortion rights in the Missouri Capitol this afternoon. Some were upset while others cheered. Protesters were both inside and outside the House chambers. It's all because lawmakers passed the fetal heartbeat bill, which will make abortions illegal after eight weeks with no exceptions for rape or incest. Supporters say it protects the life of the unborn, while critics say the government is legislating women's bodies. The bill now goes to Governor Mike Parson, who said today that he will sign it. Madison Heaver was in Jefferson City today and has a wrap from the legislative session. Yeah, the talk of the day has been that heartbeat bill. That's HB 126. Now, Governor Parson says he will be signing it in the near future. During a press conference, Governor Mike Parson even got a little snippy with reporters who had questions about the bill, and it's no exception for rape or incest. I will sign the bill as it presented to me. But why? Why do you feel that? that because I'm the governor of the state of Missouri, and that's what I do. And if you know, if they says legislators send a bill to me, I'm going to sign it. Governor Parson also said he expects challenges to that heartbeat bill. This all started in 1973. There's going to be court challenge to this issue uh, throughout the years to come. We all know that that's in here. Either you're everybody pretty well has their view. It's a very emotional issue for a lot of people. They're going to have their view whether they support or they don't. I don't know that we're going to change anybody's opinion right now on anything on that particular issue. But for Democratic Minority Leader Crystal Quaid, she says she's disappointed with the passage of the bill. During the milestone 100th General Assembly, House Democrats have worked to defend the interest of Missouri citizens against the damaging and sometimes dangerous policies advanced by the radical right-wing agendas controlling the majority party. We stood up for the most important individual liberty of all, the right to exercise control over one's own body. In addition to the anti-abortion bill, Speaker of the House Elijah Har calls this the most successful session he's seen. I believe it to be the most successful policy session that I've ever been a part of in my seven years in the legislature. Um, we passed 94 bills that have been truly agreed and sent to the governor's desk. And Governor Parson agrees. I couldn't be uh, more proud of the accomplishments that we've had through this office, working with the legislators this year, uh, coming up with huge solutions to some of what I believe some of the state problems that we've had. Coit says the Democratic caucus wasn't able to accomplish much during the session. The session was frustrating. I've said that um, time and time again. Um, you know, we had to fight against overturning the will of voters on all of the ballot initiatives. So there are a lot of things that the Democratic caucus worked for this year that I hope that we can accomplish next year. Other bills that passed this session include Haley's Law and Workforce Development. At the Missouri State Capitol in Jefferson City, Madison Heaver, Ozarks First. Thanks, Madison. And a southeast Missouri lawmaker says he misspoke on the House floor when he referred to consensual rapes during a highly charged debate on the abortion bill. Most of my rapes were not the, gen the gentleman jumping out of the bushes that nobody had ever met. That was one or two times out of a hundred. Most of them were date rapes or consensual rapes, which were all terrible. Let me say this right here and right now. There is no such thing, no such thing as consensual rape. Republican Representative Barry Hova said today that most of the sexual assaults he handled before retiring from law enforcement weren't strangers, quote, jumping out of the bushes, but instead date rapes or consensual rapes. 
Hovis later said he had meant to say date rapes or consensual or rape and said he believes there is no such thing as consensual rape. Well, the House also approved a bond measure that would authorize $301 million to repair 215 bridges across the state of Missouri. The resolution would off authorize the bonds only if Missouri wins a federal grant intended to replace an Interstate 70 bridge over the Missouri River west of Columbia. The measure also is smaller than the 350 million bond proposal initially outlined by Governor Parson. The bonds would be repaid over seven years with general state revenues. Senator Blunt is praising President Trump for his announcement that the U.S. would be lifting steel and aluminum tariff, tariffs from Canada and Mexico. Blunt said, quote, it's great news for Missouri companies and their hardworking employees. Lifting these tariffs will help ensure we have an economy that continues creating jobs and building things in our state, from bass boats and beer cans to airplanes and pickup trucks. In educational coverage now, Missouri school children could get an additional August weekend at home under legislation given final approval. A bill passed today would push back the start date for public schools by an extra four days. Supporters say the later start dates could help the economy by providing an extra weekend for tourists to take summer vacations. That legislation now goes to Governor Parson. New at 9 tonight, authorities in Barry County have identified remains found in March of 2018. 35-year-old Ronald Brightwell of Springfield disappeared in 2012. The Barry County Sheriff says his remains were found south of Jenkins, Missouri. Police now want to know if anyone had any contact with Brightwell either in person, by phone, text or social media. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Barry County Sheriff's Department. We have some new information for you tonight. The Ozark Police Chief is saying goodbye. Chief Tim Clothier will now be the Chief of Police in O'Fallon near St. Louis. Deputy Chief Justin Arnold will serve as interim chief in Ozark while the city works to fill that position permanently. Arnold has been a member of the Ozark Police Department since 2005. Happening now, anyone looking to get a tattoo, there is a recall on ink. One local tattoo artist tells us safety is always a priority and attention to detail is key. The FDA issued a recall Wednesday for six types of ink. It contains microorganisms that can cause an infection. The recalled ink is made by scalp aesthetics, dynamic color and color art. We spoke with Marshall Richards, a tattoo artist in Springfield, and he told us the tattoo community is a tight knit one and word about the recalls like this uh, travel fast. He said artists and customers both have a responsibility. It's good to it's definitely good to um, be aware of what your body's doing. Um, going to a reputable tattoo artist that's going to use the quality ink and, and make sure that you're safe. That's that's the that's the firm foremost. The advice, if you're getting a tattoo, ask your artist about the ink they're using. If you recently got a tattoo and you're experiencing any signs of an infection, call your doctor and tell your artist. Well, turning now to our weather here locally. After a couple of beautiful days, Beth, uh, definitely a day to watch the forecast and the weather tomorrow closely. Absolutely. We have a severe weather risk through the day tomorrow. All of the Ozarks included in this. We have a slight risk. We have an enhanced risk. All modes of severe weather are possible. Don't go anywhere. We'll do details right after the break. You're watching Ozarks Fox News at 9 with John Adams, Jennifer Abreu, and weather with meteorologist Beth Finello.